in previous lectures we discuss about islamic invaders over india in that uh, we discuss first about arabic invaders after two successful uh, sorry two successive defeats for arab invader in third conquest they were successful that is conquest of sindh or they are calling that as hind that is by muhammad bin qasim the nephew of khalifa but then onwards arab invaders were not getting any success or penetrating in further parts of india then the real hero the, that was turkey or turki emperor muhammad ghaznavi originally his birthplace was nishapur somewhere in turkestan and then uh, he invaded parts of india but he was engaged particularly in carrying out raids over india not building out huge empire in india but uh, he came nearly after 300 years say uh, arab invaders were there around 712 ad whereas turki invader this muhammad ghaznavi was there around 1000 ad onwards he carried out total 17 raids over india out of that he got failure only in first raid rest of 16 raids were successful he destroyed indian temples he looted out indian wealth particularly from temples and uh, he enslaves various people from india these slaves were sold in arabic world or islamic world in those days the reason that in those days slavery was prominent and the purchase of human being was a common fact now after his death there was almost peace for nearly 200 years i am not using word 200 but for nearly 200 years india got peace over there till that various dynasties flourished in india particularly in south parts of india chalukya dynasty flourished again say rashtrakut dynasty was there rashtrakut dynasty exhausted off and again that was overcome by chalukya dynasty that is called as latter chalukyas soon latter chalukyas were also lost out power particularly from gujarat and maharashtra in maharashtra territory there another feudal uh, particularly named as yadav they become separate out and they empire their uh, they establish their empire that is called as yadav empire in nashik district there is a place that is called as chandwad that was capital of yadav empire later on a king named as bhillam dev yadav he shifted out his capital from uh, that chandwad to devagiri in aurangabad district a fantastic fort was constructed over there that is very great uh, fort considered in those days almost invincible fort was there three fortification walls and 180 meter altitude was there for that fort which is inside that hilly part of fort which is having various hidden paths and so this fort was considered as almost invincible fort on earth the best fort on earth that is called as devagiri and considerably good kingdom or empire was set out here then in northern india rajputs were in power particularly chahaman dynasty that was ruling over there then onwards uh, that uh, chahaman dynasty most probably considered as chauhan they were ruling over their capital was there that is called as dhilli ka that is delhi and now there is turn that in afghanistan another leader emerged out named as mohammad ghauri he was also turki but they were settled out in afghanistan again i am telling when i am saying word turki it is actually turk but in english they are pronounced as turk but it is proper word is their turki uh, the territory towards north of afghanistan that was considered as turkestan so today they are having various nations like uzbekistan tajikistan kyrgyzstan kazakhstan but uh, and turkmenistan 
but in old days it was simply called as turk so people from that territory were called as turk so these turks were settled out in afghanistan for nearly more than 200 years they settled out in afghanistan they were islamic by religion they were considering their language of uh, administration that was persian language and turki also to some extent there was also problem of slavery he has uh, that mohammed uh, ghauri uh, most probably from ghur territory so it is called as ghuri or ghauri so he was considering as his idol for mohammed ghaznavi and then he also interested in carrying out attack over india and constructing vast empire in india uh, before discussion of these all attacks i must draw here map but that map now i am not drawing entire world map over here we are focusing more towards indian parts of history so uh, now we are considering map that is including afghanistan to myanmar so these territories we are considering here important so i am right now drawing map uh, what is my request here that try to draw map yourself also say there are many questions in upsc examination that is consisting of map reading and so uh, what is best idea that you can draw a map that is just for our purpose this is not officially maps just to get clear cut idea we have this concept so try to draw map uh, with me so when we are drawing indian map we have to try so first draw gujarat then to the south here we can draw kutch then parts of rajasthan this way punjab jammu and kashmir then himachal uttaranchal then nepal sikkim bhutan arunachal pradesh here some notch is there now here we have to connect this way here is narrow path so mind it this is bangladesh chitgaon territory this is myanmar andaman and nicobar islands over here here we are getting uh, somewhat bigger sri lanka then i have to join here this is sindh territory then baluchistan that is for this part pakistan and this is afghanistan if i want to extend out this map further this is iran baluchistan of iran this is baluchistan of pakistan that was earlier called as british baluchistan this is arabian peninsula where here makkah is there this is afghan uh, africa part so try to get uh, idea this is important world with our respect here now then uh, in red color i am drawing here mountain ranges so this is rajasthan uh, this is arauli mountain these all ranges are there we are calling himalayan ranges but uh, names again same uh, kirthar suleiman hindu kush pir panjal karakoram these ranges are there in kashmir this is we are calling as himalayan section this is purvanchal now here in gujarat there is girnar then we are aware this is western ghat or what we are calling as sahyadri in maharashtra nilgiri in karnataka and malaygiri in kerala then here uh eastern ghat and rajmahal hills here we are having satpura range vindhya mountain range so these ranges are there then certain rivers obviously uh here uh, instead of river i should show position of delhi somewhere here along uh, sorry somewhere here along with bank of river yamuna then there is river ganga here there is confluence at prayag and that moves in bangladesh uh here tributary is there uh, sorry distributary is there that is called as hugli this enters here here another river that is brahmaputra in assam and then it goes here producing vast delta land over this bangladesh part but in old days it was considered as bengal province only then here 
river indus this is distributary of river indus now uh, this mountain hindu kush now here there is pass this is called as khyber pass here it is bolan pass now rajasthan territory this particular was ruled by rajput people named as here prithviraj chauhan was their leader uh, whereas mohammad ghauri challenged him initially mohammad ghauri entered in india and he tried to conquer certain parts in northwest province then onwards he settled down also he marched till gujarat where uh, he was defeated in gujarat he was defeated several times by prithviraj chauhan but still he continued to carry out attacks over parts of india so what is plus point of gauri that uh, he was carrying out continuous efforts without frustration he was carrying out attack over india what is the problem of prithviraj chauhan that uh, in several battles after losing he was not killing out mohammad ghauri or uh, carrying out any major say for example fort of kalinger that was important but uh, for many years this fort was in power of ghauri and not uh, this prithviraj chauhan in battle no doubt prithviraj was the uh, winner but uh, continuously ghauri was losing out battle but still he was attacking out and in that particular phase there was king of gujarat he died out his wife was comparatively very young and his son was just 5 years old his wife from uh, was from kadamba dynasty of goa so she decided to fight with mohammad ghauri because mohammad ghauri was taking out advantage of this situation that he was interested in annexing out gujarat why he was again and again focusing on gujarat because simple reason that uh, mohammad ghaznavi carried out attack over gujarat and so the for that purpose he was also targeting out gujarat now in this particular battle he called out prithviraj chauhan because there was animity between king of gujarat and prithviraj chauhan so he called out prithviraj chauhan for this battle that uh, prithviraj and mohammad ghauri should fight together uh, uh, that allied together and carry out attack on gujarat but prithviraj chauhan simply re uh, re uh, rejected this proposal actually prithviraj should help this queen of gujarat but no he didn't help out but at the same time uh, he was not ready to join hands with mohammad ghauri because mohammad ghauri was foreign invader he was turki he was attacking from outside of india that is afghanistan and therefore uh, this was nice decision and then there was battle between prithviraj uh, sorry battle between mohammad ghauri and that queen of gujarat where mohammad ghauri lost out that battle also simply they ran away to afghanistan again then they analyze what is the reason behind this defeat and ultimately they concluded the reason is that prithviraj was not helping out and that's why mohammad ghauri decided to carry out attack over prithviraj and then mohammad ghauri carried out simply attack over prithviraj chauhan's empire he targeted delhi this time now see uh, here i should show the path no doubt i want to use a different color so black color i am using they came from khyber pass they crossed out river indus and they marched towards delhi in order that one should protect delhi the prithviraj chauhan also marched towards this side and somewhere approximate 200 kilometers from delhi they marched out there is place that is called as tarayan in english many time pronounce pronunciation we are pronouncing as tarayan it is not tarayan it is tarayan so the place is tarayan where mohammad ghauri's army was ready to fight with prithviraj army a vast army was set out by both of the parties and ultimately mohammad ghauri was defeated badly by prithviraj chauhan mohammad ghauri was imprisoned out and prithviraj simply ordered uh, his soldiers to rescue mohammad ghauri mohammad ghauri again insulted 
by Indian Army and sent back to Afghanistan. This is the most important part in Indian history that Indians were not poor in fighting. But some problem is there. We are calling that as in uh, Sanskrit, this is called as Sadguna Vikruti. That is a say this is not good thing that we are uh, again and again forgiving our enemy. This is the worst uh, problem in Indian community. Uh, just try to recollect uh, Mihirgul, the Hoon invader of India. Mihirgul was also uh, imprisoned but allowed to go outside India safely and then he carried out again and again attack over India. The same incident happened here. Prithviraj Chauhan uh, allowed him to go back. For nearly two years, Prithviraj uh, Muhammad Ghauri was preparing for war. His army was trained very harshly in Afghanistan, Ghazni. And then he marched out again over Prithviraj Chauhan. This time also Prithviraj Chauhan went to Tarayan. Again there was battle between Muhammad Ghauri and Prithviraj Chauhan where Muhammad Ghauri again lost out the battle. Around evening, they showed their white flag and Prithviraj Chauhan accepted <coughs> and Muhammad Gauri surrendered again. But uh, he said that uh, we will discuss about treaty tomorrow. Your army is also tired, my army is also tired, we can uh, take rest at night and tomorrow we can discuss. I will not attack over India again. Prithviraj Chauhan accepted this treaty, the uh, condition of treaty and then at night Muhammad Ghauri again carried out attack over uh, this army of Prithviraj where Prithviraj Chauhan's army was not ready for fight. They were already uh, considering that tomorrow we are going for treaty, that's all and Prithviraj Chauhan was imprisoned by Ghauri. Muhammad Ghauri now taken back Prithviraj Chauhan to Afghanistan. Whereas he annexed out Delhi. This is the only victory Muhammad Ghauri got in India but that is most remarkable history that he got Delhi. The woman or royal woman, princess and all that queens, they carried out a sacred fire and they burn out selfly. That is uh, called as Johar. Actually the word is Jai Har. That by taking name of Har, that is Shankar, we had to enter in fire. So that is corrupted word as Johar. They carried out Johar. Delhi was simply uh, conquered by this uh, Muhammad Ghauri. Then Muhammad Ghauri sent out his slave named as Bhaktiar Khilji. Now keep in mind these uh, all slaves were Turki. They were purchased out in some uh, region of Turkestan or Iran or Afghanistan. But uh, the most important, there were many slaves, but most important slaves you can keep in mind. Most important slaves you can keep in mind. The name is uh, Kutubuddin Aibak, Bhaktiar Khilji, Iltatmash and Yalduts. These four slaves are important. They were having good power in their hands. No doubt they were slave, but slave of Bhaktiar, uh, slave of Muhammad Ghauri. But Muhammad Ghauri delegated tremendous power in their hand. Say for example, Bhaktiar Khilji now marched towards eastern part of India. And this way he started out moving towards eastern part. Now Muhammad Ghauri went back to Afghanistan and he was assassinated in the Afghanistan. Now different stories are there. We don't know which is the real history but a book is there named as Prithviraj Raso. In that Prithviraj Raso the story is mentioned is something strange to hear but it is given in this way that uh, when Muhammad Ghauri was there in Afghanistan, Prithviraj Chauhan was also taken back to Afghanistan like captive 
and he was tortured to great extent in afghanistan his eyes were removed he was now blind and in that phase only uh, he is uh, say we are saying that person has bhat that means a uh, simply psychological booster of king so he reached in his court prithviraj uh, sorry mohammad gauri's court at ghazni he said that uh, prithviraj is having certain qualities of war uh, worship say for example just by closing eyes he can target out with his arrow where sound is made gauri said all right we can check out he placed 10 apples in front of mohammed uh, in front of prithviraj and 10 arrows were given at each uh, apple behind apple a sound was produced and prithviraj was asked to hit that apple to the surprise consecutive three apples were hit by prithviraj it was a very nice thing that first apple hitted may be possible we can say coincidence second apple hitted third apple also targeted by observing that ultimately mohammad gauri was also great warrior he said shabash the moment he said shabash that was targeted by prithviraj and prithvi uh, mohammad gauri was killed by prithviraj whereas his bhat that fellow he carried out sword he killed out now prithviraj to stop his further pain so ultimately prithviraj was also killed over there and this way and he also killed himself so this way mohammad gauri was killed out in ghazni i don't know whether this story is real or just in form of epic it is given but if we want to accept stories given by these uh, foreign invaders as truth then we can consider this story as also truth we don't know but uh, the fact is mentioned in history that after returning back to ghazni mohammad gauri was assassinated now power was in hands of yaldus and so simply they separated out their empire so in india particularly at delhi qutubuddin aibak carried out hold iltutmash was helping him bakhtiyar khilji was extending his empire in eastern part whereas yaldus was controlling now ghazni so here qutubuddin aibak is important he is actually considered as slave of mohammad gauri and so the dynasty established over delhi that is considered as slave dynasty gulam in their language they are calling themselves as gulam so this dynasty is gulam dynasty or slave dynasty the first ruler is qutubuddin aibak bakhtiyar khilji or khalji some book they are mentioning khilji some book they are mentioning khalji so bakhtiyar khalji uh, simply went to conquer eastern parts of india and spread this sacred religion over this part he annexed out almost all parts of uttar pradesh present day none of the king was able to produce strong resistance to bakhtiyar khilji this is not the case that uh, in history many time we are hearing out something wrong that after losing out the battle of tarayan that is between prithviraj chauhan and mohammad gauri after losing out that battle muslim rule came over india entire india no it was not entire india only rajputs were defeated prithviraj chauhan was defeated but in latter phase all the kings from uttar pradesh from bihar from bengal from assam were surrendered out in front of bakhtiyar khilji so real empire is founded in india that was by bakhtiyar khilji bakhtiyar khilji went to bihar where there is world famous university that is nalanda university we are already aware that in hun attack the world's ancient most and longest lived university that was takshashila university that was destroyed by huns and now it is number of uh, now nalanda university a buddhist monk was uh, chief of this university he was called in front of bakhtiyar khilji but uh, he was very very scholar 
he started speaking with him in arabic language baktiyar khilji was not aware of that arabic language at that extent when baktiyar khilji stated some of the part of quran this buddhist monk uh, simply uh, uh, able to give him exact page number and distract uh, dis uh, distribute uh, descript excellent cut kar description of that particular uh, verses in that quran holy quran now uh, baktiyar khilji was simply uh, impressed by this buddhist monk and he asked him to accept islam but this buddhist monk refused out and to the surprise baktiyar khilji uh, was not well for 10 days in that particular 10 days various books the important books from nalanda university were taken out and these books were sent out from nalanda to tibet via nepal after 10 days when baktiyar khilji was now well he asked this buddhist monk again that are you ready to accept islam he said no i am ready to die but i will not accept islam and then he said no i will not kill you but i will destroy university in front of you and then uh, over the period of 10 days nalanda university was destroyed all books from ancient period the books were burnt out the all important records were burnt out these all things were simply uh, destroyed in this 10 days period or uh, maybe possible some books are mentioning this destruction was continued for more than 40 days also i don't know but the thing is that this nalanda university was brutally destroyed by uh, baktiyar khilji now tell me when we discuss try to recollect our earlier lectures first second lecture about history that indians are not maintaining their records like that argumentation was there say our university where most probably records will be there that all records were destroyed by either uh, huns during takshashila destruction and now baktiyar khilji destroyed this university uh, nalanda university and then uh, now it is news that nalanda university is again constructed reconstructed in bihar just imagine what happens when particular university is destroyed in 2010 the lowest literacy rate was there in bihar whereas world's famous university was there in bihar nalanda that was destroyed this is the main reason that why there is problem in bihar that this type of education centers were destroyed now bengal was also annexed by baktiyar khilji then he tried to enter in assam where tribal people were there named as ahom they were very good in archery baktiyar khilji was not able to stood in front of him and then he was defeated so he returned back so uh, if i want to show here this empire that was ranging from afghanistan kashmir was not their part of empire but this on almost northern india not himachal uttaranchal was also not there but this part so this way they were having power in their hand the northern entire this belt was there in their hand so this way islamic empire produced in india that was concentrated particularly from punjab then haryana parts of himachal parts of uttaranchal delhi parts of rajasthan parts of uttar pradesh bihar bengal bangladesh that now around 1206 this ghauri got power in hands of delhi kutubuddin aibak a slave of mohammad ghauri was uh, given charge of delhi now here uh, i am not saying that this was muslim rule or islamic rule rather this period is famous as turki rule over india so why we are not using word islamic and why we are using word turki the reason is that all powers were concentrated in hands of turki people only 
say they started out spreading islam in india because mohammad gauri is the first man who can penetrate till deep this inside india otherwise mohammad gauri uh, mohammad bin qasim was able to conquer just thin territory ghaznavi was able to penetrate but he was not able to establish his islamic empire whereas mohammad gauri and his slave that bakhtiyar khilji was able to carry out this thing but what is the important thing that they started out spreading islam but they were not ready to recognize even indian muslims as capable of rule they were having all their turki rulers turki officials only and that's why this rule particularly is called as turki rule over india now in turki language there is word that is called as urdu the meaning of urdu is camp in the language uh, when this turki invaders tried to communicate with indian people they were not able to communicate because they were having language as urdu uh, sorry uh, turki whereas indians were good in hindi so simply uh, these newly converted muslims and uh, turki invaders they will trying to uh, they were trying to communicate with each other by mixing out these two languages uh, so at camp this language was started speaking so that's why they called as this language as language of camp that means language of camp in their language it is urdu and this way urdu language is produced in india uh, particularly urdu language is mixed type of language it is not pure language uh, usually turki arabic words are there and uh, persian words are there whereas verbs are hindi so this way this language is mixture of languages turki farsi that is persian language and arabic language words whereas verbs we are using indian that is hindi verbs and so by this mixture this language was produced now uh, this dynasty is called as either slave dynasty gulam dynasty or even mamluk is name of this dynasty so by all this record we can say that is mamluk dynasty uh, slave dynasty or gulam dynasty over delhi kutubuddin aibak destroyed various temples and it is said that from destroyed material of temple he started out erecting out a tower in their language tower is called as minar and so he gave his name that is kutub minar so this way kutub minar constructed the construction was started under his rule apart from this turki people certain officials were also there they are called as tazik that is non turkish but foreigners from high lineage so like that the other people were also there but they were not particularly indian they were also foreigners so this is predominantly foreign rule over india now after kutubuddin kutubuddin ruled from 1206 to 1211 after death of kutubuddin uh, another slave that was considered as sultan that is iltatmash in some book it is written as altunia and some book they are saying iltatmash altamash iltatmash like that various names are there so that is iltatmash he conquered the throne and uh, he is considered as ruler he was uh, also recognized by khalifa and he is ruler of delhi now so this is particularly we are calling as delhi sultanat so it was there from afghanistan to bengal iltatmash completed the work of kutub minar so kutub minar was started by constructed by kutubuddin aibak but it was completed by uh, this iltatmash again uh, administration part was set out during rule of iltatmash say entire empire was divided into smaller part we are calling that uh, 
part as ikta the chief of ikta ikta means province the chief of ikta that is called as mufti so they div divided empire in form of ikta that is province the leader for administrative purpose it was given in hands of that leader that is called as mufti and this way they divided their empire we are going to detail uh, discuss in detail afterwards the administration during turki rule they introduced certain coins uh, he introduced silver coin that is called as tanka so this way this tanka was introduced uh, by iltutmish then copper coin also introduced by uh, this uh, iltutmish that copper coin is called as jital j i t a l so this way these coins were introduced here and a trouble arrived over india say already india was victim of foreign invaders from persian invention over a period say first persian invader then greek invaders you are aware four names of greek invader they are alexander seleucus nicator demetrius and menander so these four invaders were there then after that they came as refugee after that period then there was a invention of scythian people they are called as shak again there was peace but again kushan uh, or uchis invaded parts of india after that huns were there and after that gurjar pratihar uh, gurjar people then their dynasty is called as gurjar pratihar then arabic invaders then turki invaders again turki invaders and now again mongol invader hun was actually hun swear mongol but again after period of nearly 600 years to 800 years again mongols united their population increased out in mongolia and a great person in mongolia emerge out so here i want to take break of islamic invaders over india and now we have to discuss something about mongol empire this is no doubt directly not connected with india but it is really important in further parts of history because this incident taken place and that is having impacts over india so we have to discuss in next lecture about chengiz khan or it is called as genghiz khan